All right, here's the second home workout for you guys in lockdown. Now, pretty similar things. It is dealing with bands and kettlebells, but this one has got a bit of a posterior chain bias, and I'll show you what I mean for the upper body and the lower body. First one I like doing, especially if you've got old shoulder problems or you're about to do pressing work, is work on your rotator cuff. Now, nine times out of 10, people miss their rotator cuff. And if you're gonna go for one exercise alone, I'd probably go for external rotation. Now, that's a really common one to be weak, and it's one that I have to work on constantly as I've had shoulder surgery. Now, if you've had shoulder surgery or shoulder problems or you do a lot of pressing, a lot of pushing, then external rotation is probably a really good one to have in your toolkit. Now, today I'm doing external rotation at 90 degrees. Now, this one is done with a band. I really highly recommend you do bands rather than dumbbells for external rotation when you're in standing. The reason being is when you've got a band, the band load is constant all the way from here through to here, okay? If you had a dumbbell from here as you get to there, the dumbbell weight goes down, so there's no load on the old posterior lateral rotator cuff, okay? So definitely have a band. Now, if you stand too far away, of course, when you're doing this one, it's too hard, all right? So keep it down on the floor rather than down on your foot. Remember, if it's down on your foot, let me just show you. It's down on your foot like this. When you get up, you're going to have the same problem as the dumbbell. It's too vertical, okay? It's very easy up there. So you want it attached to something, could be a pole like this, could be the bottom of a chair leg, that's a heavy chair leg or a dining room table, and make sure you're not too far away. Get that elbow to 90 degrees, keep your core on, keep your nice and stable, shoulder down and back, and then try to pull back at least to that sort of 90 degree position, if not past that. Depends on how much mobility, how much range you've got, but you really wanna try and keep your elbow still in one position, don't let it fly around, okay? Go from there, just a little bit below 90, and we're coming back as far as you can go. And you're trying to work on a good 10 to 12 reps to try and get that strength thing right in the back of the cuff. So that's number one. Now, because today is a real posterior chain bias, you really gotta make sure you're doing some anterior core to offset how much load you're putting through your lower back. So what I like doing is a dead bug. Now, this is a bit of a variation I've developed over time, but it's essentially like a Pilates tabletop with a band. So if you can attach like a medium power band to a pole, and then you go into a position where when you pull on that band, you've got quite a bit of tension there. Now that's gonna generate a lot of more abdominal load through the front here. The focus is making sure your neutral spine stays in neutral, okay? When you're doing this exercise and you're either tapping one foot or you're tapping both feet, you can't afford for your back to do that, okay? So you can't afford to let your lumbar spine go into extension, jack up and jam into extension, because what's gonna happen is it's gonna get sore, but also you're gonna load it too much and create a bad moving pattern when you're trying to stabilize this core for your posterior chain exercises, okay? So crucial that you don't try to overcook it by trying to extend the legs out and arching your back or pulling too much on the band and creating too much fatigue. So it's a nice happy medium between enough band tension here and then how much you put your legs out, okay? So for me, I need a bit of tension on here, find my neutral spine, and slowly focus on dropping the knees, dropping the feet to touch the floor, and come back to 90 degrees. And the whole time, I'm thinking about my neutral spine. I'm thinking about where this lower back is in, re in relation to the ground, making sure it doesn't arch up. Now, if you get to the point where you're doing, you know, you're gonna sort of rep eight, Rep nine, you want to keep going, but you're fatiguing and you feel like you're losing control of that lower back, just keep one foot in there and drop one to there. Okay, and then swap. And that'll give you a little bit more workout on those hip flexors, lower abdominals, without losing your neutral spine and jacking up your back. Now that's a really nice one to start working on as an anterior core sort of primer before you do all the posterior chain work coming up. All right, number three is your Romanian deadlift. Now, similar to last week, we're using kettlebells and bands. Now, the reason for that, again, is because these kettlebells aren't quite heavy enough and we're at home, so we're combining pieces of equipment. But again, it's really nice because you get a variable load and a constant load, and it helps you do that movement a little bit better. So with this one, set up the band first, okay? Now, with your feet, I'd always go wider than your shoulders, and not too wide, straight feet. Then you go around or out, 
around and in, as though you're like you're grabbing a bar, then you grab the dumbbells and the band together. Okay, and there's your load. So remember with this one, make sure feet are nice and straight. Okay, knees out over their feet, and you're gonna hinge and get that posterior chain backwards, meaning getting your hips backwards, keeping your back, lower back flat, keeping your core on, and making sure you're not losing any neutral spine when you do this movement. Okay, it's simply a hip hinge, it's a Romanian deadlift. Think of your hips as like a filing cabinet, going forward, going straight back, they can't go up or down. You don't want to turn it into a squat. And again, using a mirror, or a, like a mirror which I can see, keeping an eye on your form is really crucial. Now that should be all felt in your hammies, maybe a bit of glute, not in any lower back. So when you're at home, if you want to do a push-up, you can add some load on with the power band. Now I'll just go with a mini power band, I wouldn't overcook it. Um, and this is why you do your rotator cuff stuff first, because you're going to pressing load. This is quite full on, but certainly achievable. What I like to do is have that band all the way around you, okay, under there. And this is where you've got to get your hands right. Go under the band with that. And then what you need to do is then tighten it up to what you need, okay? So you'll find that you want to get enough tension between your hand and your back, so at the bottom of that press, it's not loose. So you go into push-up again. When I do a push-up, I like to go from four point, go wider, go forward into that position there. And then you start off with your shoulders over your hands, glutes on, core on, knees nice and straight, and then you're coming down and then pressing back. Now you notice, if you come down and that band goes a little bit loose, you might want to go, okay, go from there, tighten it up a notch, just so you've got tension all the way through with that load. So set yourself up, shoulders over hands, and then you're gonna go down, bit of load, and push up. Keeping your glutes on, keeping your knees straight, keeping your core on, don't use a neutral spine, make sure you retract and protract. Retract, protract. And the great thing about that is, if you get the tension right, you fatigue out pretty quick, which only gives you eight or 10 reps out of that. Okay, so if you've got an outdoor table, or if you've got an indoor table, or even a bed, this is a really good one to do for your lower back. So when you're doing reverse lumbar extensions, you've just gotta make sure that your core is really, really on, and you don't, again, lose neutral spine. So you don't go into extension. So what I mean is, when you're doing this, you don't go into extension, you go into hip extension. Now the hip extension, the load of my legs, is gonna create the strengthening through my lower back. So I'm gonna use my lower back, a little bit of extension, just a tiny bit, but the focus is on hip extension, but I'm gonna use my lower back as a stabilizer. Now, to make sure I'm using that as a stabilizer, this has gotta be on. So when you're in this position, keep your hips off the end of the table, obviously grab onto that table, and you've gotta set yourself up first. This lower back needs to be neutral, okay? Don't ram it into extension. So neutral spine there, and then use your core, your anterior core, your pelvic floor, switch everything on to hold you in that position. So when you come up, there's only a minimal amount of lumbar extension. You're trying to minimize that, draw it on, maximize the hip extension. So it's a glute and hammy exercise. You'll feel it in your lower back because you're using your lower back to stabilize, to hold your pelvis, to lift your legs, okay? Remember that glutes, the hammies are lifting the legs. The lower back is doing all the work to stabilize so you can perform that function. And that's your posterior chain hip extension. So going from lower body straight into upper body, I like that change from lower body to upper body so you don't get that sort of fatigue. Now, what I'm gonna get you doing is one arm row pull down. So I'd go quite high with this because we're trying to get a bit of a bias of pulling down, all right? So we want our, we want to do a lat and an arm row, but we're trying to get our lower traps switched on as well. So it's important that you have it from an angle, maybe come down from a knee even, and get that sort of line of pull from the anchor point through to your shoulder, one straight line, all right? And when you do this one, making sure shoulder blade first, all right? So it's retraction, depression, then you pull through right to here, and then keep that shoulder blade back to this line of pull, and then let it go forward in protraction, all right? So pull back, pull down. 
and then reverse that order. Just make sure you're trying not to let your upper trap fire up. It's not an upper trap exercise. It's more of a lower trap, lats, bicep, posterior shoulder. Okay, this is where that rotator cuff is really important. And just try and work on keeping it pretty much robotic. This weight needs to be heavy enough to generate some strengthening work, but not so much that you lose your form. Okay. All right, second lower body exercises into a physio lunge. Now, the trick with physio lunge is making sure your angles are correct, getting your shin forward, getting your upper body forward, getting the weight out of your back leg and putting in the front leg. Now, similar to the Romanian deadlift, we're using bands and kettlebells. A little bit tricky to set up, but it's a really good one. If you're lacking in the load for the weight here, if you haven't got a heavy enough weight there, then putting on this band is really helpful. Make sure you get this band on first. I would put it over like a sling, okay? So it goes, if it's actually your right foot is the front foot, left shoulder, all right? So once you're in that position, coming up into your standing position, go back into your lunge. So weight on the front foot is through the heel more than the toe. Weight on the back foot, of course, is my toe. Now when you're doing this lunge, what you need to aim for is bending both knees coming forward and then driving back with that front leg. So when I come forward, I want my upper body, my back thigh, my front shin to be just about, if possible, all on the same angle when you're doing this, okay? Keep that knee tracking beautifully over your foot and driving back. Now, if I wanna get more posterior chain with this exercise, when I come down, I wanna push my heel through the floor, okay? Rather than just straightening the knee or pushing up, I wanna think about pushing down with the front leg, not the back leg. So coming down to the heel, pushing my heel down, you get way more glute and hemi on the front leg, like that. So think of 50-50 that position, 80% there, drive it down, back to 50-50. All right, last one is for those swimmers out there, and I'm doing this one because of my triathlon coming up, but for the swimmers, this is working on your posterior chain, if you like, of your shoulder. So working on your extension, your tricep, your lats, trying to get that swim movement a little bit better, which is crucial for me, but also it works on the back of the shoulder, which is often forgotten. So with this one, what I suggest you do is have a double band, again, attached to a pole, but what you want to try and aim for is coming down into almost like a deadlift position, as though you're going to do a row, but you're going to do a straight arm movement. So when you pull down, pull that shoulder blade back first and then swipe through to there, okay? And then making sure that shoulder stays back, return the hand and come back. It's very similar to the pull down, but you're not doing any elbow flexion. You're trying to work on tricep this time when you pull through, okay? And this is gonna be really helpful for that pull through, through stroke. And you can really feel that light up in your tricep. It helps that rear delt, helps your posterior cuff. Trying to get that movement nice. And like I said, for swimmers, especially swimmers recovering from a shoulder injury, trying to get that swim movement back, that load through the back of the shoulder. This is a really great exercise. All right, that's it for this week. See you for part three next week.